As climate change grips the world, intense storms and heavy rainfall are impacting our communities. This can wreak havoc on our roads, bridges, and even our backyards. As WCCO's Caroline Cumming reports, severe weather is ushering in new thinking when it comes to building infrastructure that's made to last. As the sun sets over Lake Superior, a new dawn for Duluth Lake Walk that clings to its coast. The response to this new look, this new reset, has been just phenomenal. But as Mike LeBeau, who manages construction projects for the city, remembers, it was a redo not out of want, but need. There was wind speeds of over 100 miles an hour and 20, 25 foot waves. A trio of powerful storms in late 2017 to 2018 tore up the shoreline, leaving nothing but tens of millions of dollars in damages and an opportunity to rebuild better than before. We can't be sure that we've seen the worst yet of what the lake can do, what the climate can do to us. Was this the costliest disaster Duluth's ever seen? Yeah, by far. A team of specialists big, helped with construction. Thing. Each stone here deliberately placed like pieces of a puzzle. What is this? It's concrete. concrete and does it wall. go straight down? It goes straight down. Behind it, a concrete wall at some points 12 feet deep. Without the stone, the concrete wall would just be pounded by the waves. So this is protecting the concrete wall, which is helping to protect the trails and that stairway and everything behind it. City officials in Minnesota say a future with climate change is reshaping their thinking about building roads, bridges, and in Duluth, the lake walk. Basic infrastructure you and I use every day and we expect to continue to use for decades to come. State climate projections show more intense rains in our future and state and federally declared disasters are becoming more frequent and costly. The cost, the severity and the number of events is clearly curving up. 145 miles south in Shoreview, there's a stretch of road tucked in between Lake Owasso and Lake Wabasso that has special grooves on its surface. The water just basically lands on the pavement and it finds its way through these cracks. It's called permeable pavement. And it works like this. The city began using a similar tactic in a nearby neighborhood a decade ago as a way to boost water quality by minimizing runoff. But there's been an added benefit of stormwater management. Public Works Director Mark Maloney says there's less flooding in areas with this type of pavement. We had a pretty static idea of how much rain we got and how long the winters were. And uh, that's really been challenged in the last 10 to 15 years. It only covers about one and a half percent of city streets. Maloney says it's strategically placed and endures Minnesota winters. As soon as the sun gets on here for any sustained period of time, all the stuff that all the stuff that you see clogging the, the joints and the pores uh, melts away and just drops through the pavements. Up front, it's a larger investment, he says, than typical concrete on normal roads. But in the long run, maintenance costs less. I think the world we live in now, the people that are here that are paying for everything, are expecting us to be thinking this way. Nearby Robbinsdale spent $320,000 on a system that pumps water out of Crystal Lake, which has no natural outlet, to keep it from flooding, a direct response to more frequent and intense rains. How much is climate change part of the conversation? Almost everything we do with our infrastructure, especially storm sewer, we have to upgrade it now uh, to take account of the fact that the dynamics have changed. Mayor Bill Blonigan joined forces with 15 other Minnesota cities declaring a climate emergency, calling on state and federal governments to commit more resources to combating the problem. We need to do something before we reach a, a tipping point. But before that happens, Minnesotans will continue to rely on infrastructure every day. There's there's a drain right there at the base of that stairs. And those tasked with designing and repairing it will have to meet that demand while Mother Nature takes its toll. We're dealing with a new reality and we have to adapt to it. Caroline Cummings, WCCO 4 News. An analysis by the National Institute of Building Scientists from a few years ago found that every dollar spent on disaster mitigation now saves communities $6.